Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, we're going to continue our lessons uh, in accounting. So we're going to move to uh, the recording process. The recording process is a critical component of uh, bookkeeping. Uh, if you understand the recording process, you will be a, a really good student of accounting because you'll understand where everything is coming from as far as the financial transactions are concerned. So uh, this chapter is going to involve a few things. You can see the agenda. We're going to talk about uh, T accounts and what does the word accounts uh, mean. We're going to talk about the double entry uh, accounting system. We're going to talk about debits and credit rules. Um, debits and credits are really, really critical as far as um, how uh, the accounts are transacted and how they're recorded. The recording process. Then we're going to talk about the journal, the ledger, and the trial balance. So uh, let's start with what is the formal definition of an account? An account is an individual record of increases and decreases. So remember, accounting is not counting. Accounting is accounting, which means that you're, uh, you're, uh, you're recording all of the transactions which is happening in the company. And remember, they're all financial transactions only. So you're, you're, you are accounting for those transactions. And that means you have to create accounts. So an account is a, um, a summary of what has happened during the year um, for the company in that specific uh, account. An example of an account is salary expenses, rent expenses, revenues, right? these are all things, either money is coming in or money is going out. Some other accounts are cash, accounts receivables, inventory, these are all things that are part of the accounting system. And you can see, since accountants are so creative with names, we call it a T account. Literally, it looks like a T. So on one side, we have debits, and the, on the other side, we have credits. Debit is always on the left side of the T account, always. A credit is always on the right side of the T account, always. So you have uh, accounts, um, you try to make T accounts for visual understanding and also to see where the debits and credits would be. Uh, and then at the end, of course, you have a balance. You either have a debit balance or you have a credit balance. Moving on to the next slide, it shows you um, a thorough example of how a T account is used and transacted. So you can see if someone makes an initial investment of $15,000 cash, look and you can see what happens to the T account. Yeah. So you can see the T account, there's a debit on the left, you put debit cash, you put credit owners at capital and cash uh, is debited 15,000 and owner's capital would be credited 15,000 but right now we're talking about cash only so you can see cash is debited $15,000 the next transaction right away is monthly rent of $7,000 so when money goes out cash is credited so you can see now cash there's a credit of $7,000 on the right side. And then you can also see the summary. You can see cash debit 15,000, cash credit 7,000, and the balance now is $8,000 debit. And so you take the 15,000, which is a higher number than 7,000, you take 15 minus seven, and you see that the 8,000 is now a debit balance because you started off with a debit balance. Okay, so that was just an example. We'll come to those kind of transactions in a few minutes. Uh, double entry system. Accounting is based on a double entry system. So every time there is a transaction, there are two accounts that are affected. Always. That's why we call it a double entry system. Why is there a double entry system in accounting? So we can balance the most fundamental accounting equation, which is assets equals liabilities plus equities. 
in order for us to balance the both sides, we need to have an entry each on, on the side, on each side. So we'll have one entry that will be reflective of the assets usually, and we'll have another entry that will be reflected of the liabilities and equities. We might have two entries which are both reflected in the assets. So one goes up, the other goes down. And we might have same, same alert scenario in the liabilities and equities. Where one goes up, the other goes down. In order for it to stay balanced, we must have two parts of an entry. One is always a debit, and the other is always a credit. So again, remember that debits must equal credits. Assets must equal liabilities and owner's equity combined. So debits must always equal credits in each transaction. Otherwise, the, the equation won't balance. Now we come to the most fundamental rules of bookkeeping slash accounting. These rules are so fundamental that I'm asking you to memorize them. I don't ask anyone to memorize anything about accounting, but they, this you must memorize. At the beginning of every test, at the beginning of every evaluation, at the beginning of, of anything that you are going to be writing, not just in this course, but throughout your uh, post-secondary studies, make sure that you know these rules. And make sure maybe at that point, before the uh, writing of the test, just write the rules down, take 30 seconds, and write the rules down on the exam paper. So now you have a basis to go back to when you're reading the questions. You must know these rules. So, what are these rules? In the asset side, a debit always means that assets have gone up. You can see there's a plus sign, there's an arrow sign, in order for you to understand that assets will always go up if you debit them. Assets will go down if you credit them. So for assets, debit goes up, credit goes down. For liabilities, it is the opposite. Debits go down, credits go up. And you can see assets, debits go up, credits go down, liabilities, debits go down, credits go up, and owner's equity is similar to, um, to uh, liabilities, where it debits go down, credits go up. There is one account in the owner's equity called owner's drawings. Okay? And we'll come to that eventually. But for owner's drawings, it is different. You have debits that go up and credits that go down. And then you have revenues and expenses, which are part of owner's equity at this point. You can also see for revenues, debits go down, credits go up. And for expenses, debits go up credits go down. I know I've said debits and credits 100 times right now, but debits and credit rules are listed right here, and I ask you to memorize them, to understand them as we go along in the course. So how do we use these debits and credits? Well, we use them to record transactions. <coughs> the recording process has three steps as you probably remember from uh, previous uh, presentations. You analyze each transaction, you enter the transaction in a journal, and you transfer the journal to ledger. So now these are new words probably. Journal, ledger, transaction, analysis. However, as we go through the course, you'll, remember, you'll know these words and you'll understand what they mean and uh, why do we use them. So what is the journal? The journal is really just a record of all the transactions of the company. Start from the beginning of the period to the current time. It carries all the transactions, all the debits and credits that you have done over the lifetime of the company that you can see them in the journal. Of course, the journal can be um, Categorized every year, like categorized in the sense that at the end of the year you have you know close the journal and you have another journal, so you can at least know which journal you'll have to refer back to if you ever need to go back. The journal entries 
are part of the journal. You make those entries on the journal or in the journal. Okay, you can look at the, the uh, significant contributions of the journal uh, when you have a minute. So the real question is, how do you record? This would be considered a simple journal entry. You can see that in this case, there are two accounts that are involved, truck and cash. So what is happening in this case? Someone is buy buying truck. Right? So what, what happens is you debit truck for $14,000 and you credit cash for $14,000. So the value of the truck has gone up because you've debited it and because the truck is an asset. The value of cash has gone down because you've used the cash and the cash is an asset, so you credit it. So you debit truck, credit cash in this example. When you debit truck, the value of the truck goes up. When you credit cash, the value of the cash goes down. At the end of this transaction, the accounting equation is still balanced. And also, the debits equal credits. So we'll stop it here and we'll continue from here tomorrow.